Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Jesus Christ, our Lord, on this blessed Sunday, make us worthy to praise your resurrection with pure hearts and with clear consciences. With all the children of your Holy Church, we glorify and thank you, your Father and your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Peace be with the church and her children. Let us raise glory, honor, and praise to the good and merciful Lord, who in his compassion came down to us and became flesh. He chose to taste death to save us, and he descended to the realm of the dead. By his resurrection he gave joy to his disciples, and gave light to the nations with the light of his salvation. To the good one be glory and honor on this blessed Sunday and all the days of our lives, now and forever. O word of God, who can adequately praise you for the depth of your compassion, and what voice can bless you, for you are above all praise. Neither mind nor tongue can describe the wonders you accomplished on Sunday, the day of, the day of your resurrection from the dead. And so with the psalmist David we cry out, this is the day the Lord has made, let us be rejoice in it and be glad. Now, O Christ, our God, we ask you with the fragrance of this incense, which we offer you to forgive our sins, give peace of mind to those in distress, and comfort to those who are anxious. Bring back those who are far, and watch over those who are near. Guide the shepherds, sanctify the priests, and purify the deacons. Pardon all sinners and guard the righteous. Protect orphans and help widows. Drive away conflicts and put an end to dissension. Remember the faithful departed and grant them rest in your heavenly kingdom that with them we may celebrate that eternal feast. We raise glory to you, to your blessed Father, and to your living Holy Spirit, now and forever.
Accept the sweet fragrance of our incense and make us worthy to announce your resurrection along with all the angels to proclaim it with your women disciples and to rejoice in it with your pure apostles. We raise glory to you, to your Father and to your Holy Spirit forever. Kadishat Aloho Kadishat Hayatono Kadishat Lohoyoto Etrahanalo Kadishat Aloho Kadishat Hayatono Shout with joy from the mountains, Sunday is a fee so great. Offer praise to the Lord God, and with angels celebrate. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Barach mor Glory to the Lord of Paul and the Apostles. May the mercy of God descend upon the reader, the listeners, and upon this parish, and her children forever. I consider that the sufferings of this present time are as nothing compared with the glory to be revealed for us. For creation awaits with eager expectation the revelation of the children of God. For creation was made subject to futility, not of its own accord, but because of the one who subjected it in hope that creation itself would be set free 
from slavery to corruption and share in the glorious freedom of the children of God. We know that all creation is groaning in labor even until now. And not only that, but we ourselves who have the first fruits of the Spirit, we also groan within ourselves as we await for adoption, the redemption of our bodies. For in hope we were saved. Now hope that sees for itself is not hope. For who hopes for what one sees? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait with endurance. In the same manner, the Spirit also comes to the aid of our weakness. For we do not know how to pray as we ought, but the Spirit himself intercedes with inexpressible groanings. And the one who searches hearts knows what is the intention of the Spirit, because he intercedes for the Holy Ones according to God's will. Praise be to God always. More of the land, praise the Lord on the most of the church. Before the proclamation of the gospel of our Savior, announcing life for our souls. We offer this incense and ask for your mercy, O Lord. Peace be with you. From the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. Luke, who proclaimed life to the world, let us listen to the proclamation of life and salvation for our souls. The evangelist Luke writes, Jesus then addressed them this parable. To those who were convinced of their own righteousness, and who despised everyone else. Two men went up to the temple area to pray. One was a Pharisee and the other was a publican. The Pharisee took up his position and he spoke this prayer within himself. O oh God, I thank you that I am not like the rest of men, greedy, dishonest, adulterous, or even as this tax collector. I fast twice a week, and I pay tithes on my whole income. But the publican stood off at a great distance, and he would not even raise his eyes to heaven, but he beat his breasts, and he prayed, O oh God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, the latter went home justified, not the former. For everyone who exalts himself shall be humbled, and the one who humbles himself shall be exalted. This is the truth, peace be with you.
We know that all creation itself groans in labor even until now. In the name of the Father and the Son of the Holy Spirit, amen. So today what we can consider is oneness, unity, oneness. And also the icon, the hood that is on Saint Ephraim. And unity because what you notice in this letter of St. Paul to the Romans, in this section, he links together all of creation itself. It's a very unusual image that nature itself is in labor pains. It is waiting for the moment of the revelation of glory in the children of God. It's waiting for that moment of the day of the resurrection in which redemption will be complete. Redemption is not complete now. The dead who lay in the dormitories, the cemeteries, those who lay in the cemeteries await the fullness of the redemption, which is why often in the anaphoras we say, they wait for you in life-giving hope. They pass through this life, but redemption is something in its fullness that we're still looking forward to. And creation itself is also part of that whole process because it will also be renewed. As St. Peter says, renewed by fire. And it's obviously not what you have on your campfire. The fire, this fire transfigures all of creation. It's not even, a, at one point, people try to interpret it, atomic bombs. It, it, no, this is something that the entire creation will be consumed by whatever this fire is and be renewed. So St. Paul is using this image because, of course, in the doctrine and understanding of the church, all of creation is wounded itself by the fall of Adam and Eve. Adam and Eve is not just something that happens to the human race. It happens to all of creation because of the first man and first woman. Because of their choices, creation itself is wounded and itself is not as beautiful as it had been. And as human nature remains integral and whole, but profoundly wounded, so also nature is the same nature as in creation, of course, but it is also profoundly wounded. That is why St. Paul is linking together creation itself waiting for the day of the parousia, waiting for the day of glory, and simultaneously he talks about the spirit who is given to us already as first fruits. So the oneness, the unity, bringing these two ideas together that we ourselves, that the Spirit of God is working to transform us to that moment of revealing His glory within us, individually. And he says that we wait, we groan, we are in labor pains until redemption is complete, which is the, ad the adoption, he calls it, the redemption of our bodies and the resurrection. So that's the one aspect of oneness in the epistle today. But there is also a oneness as we talk about St. Ephraim, because St. Ephraim, when you notice, he dies in 373. So St. Ephraim is a principle of unity and a source of unity for all of the Syriac churches. When I say all the Syriac churches, because there are Syriac Orthodox, there are Syriac Catholics, there are, of course are the Maronites, and there are the Chaldeans, and then there is the Assyrian Church of the East. And so of course Syrian Catholic, the Chaldeans, the Maronites, they're all Catholic in communion with the Apostolic See. And the others are not in communion with the Apostolic See, at least certainly not in a fullness of that communion. But because those divisions date from the fifth century. They date from 431, 451, the two major councils of Ephesus and Chalcedon, and the disagreements over these councils. That is in the 400s what causes the shattering and the fragmentation of the Syriac churches that we have with us to this day, 1600 years later. But because St. Ephraim out of Edessa dies in 373, 
he's, the, he's at the end of the century just before these events. And so all of the Syrians will look to him as being their father, will look to him as being one of their treasures. So it's also a point of unity for the Syriac churches that is oneness, if you want, around St. Ephraim. And also as St. Paul talks about the spirit which is given to us, that plums to the very depths and prays actually within us. If you remember a month and a half ago, we talked about the stages in the spiritual life. At the beginning, it's a lot about us trying to do things, try to do my morning prayers, my night prayers, my rosary, try to get those things going. That's the very beginning of the spiritual life. Now you're just tinkering around with the tools and the instruments. But eventually, as the spiritual life moves forward, it is less us doing it and more God who works within us as we move forward. And so that presence of the Spirit is also one of the titles of St. Ephraim in his writings and in his poetry. He's known as Kenoro Dorujo, the harp of the Spirit. He is the one who sings of the glory of the presence of the sanctifying power of the Spirit of God present to us. And by giving expression to it, he is the very instrument, Kenoro. He is the harp of the Spirit in giving word to this work of sanctification. Now, St. Paul also says in this epistle, that not only we ourselves, but ourselves who have the first fruits of the Spirit, we also groan within ourselves and we await this adoption, the redemption of our bodies. The second thing that I wanted you to notice was the hood. The artist who did this, who wrote, and the terminology is you write an icon. You don't paint them, you write them. They are, iconogra they are iconographers. They write the icons. And the icon writing is an act of religion. You prepare for it, you pray, it's done in prayer, and you fast in writing an icon. It's not just a picture. So the woman in England who was commissioned to make this icon was commissioned by a Syriac Orthodox priest. So what, <clears throat> what the icon does, and you often see Saint Ephraim portrayed this way, is he's actually portrayed that hood is an indication of a Syriac monk. It's got 12 crosses on the hood for all of the symbolisms of the cross and all the symbolisms of 12 that we need not to go into now. But he's being portrayed as being a Syriac monk, which he was not. The Greeks take him and call him Saint, Syri Saint Ephraim the Syrian. And they basically make him into a Greek monastic, which he was not. He was Ihidoyo. In the Syriac tradition, there is a very specific movement that takes place in the first four centuries. Ihidoyutho. Ihidoyo, we taught the idea is the consideration today of one. Ihidoyo is oneness. In the Gospels, it, the, what we speak of as being the, un, the only begotten son in English. In the Syriac is Ihidoyo bro. Bro is son. Ihidoyo is going to be the word that we are going to be calling in English only begotten. But the word means singular, oneness, unit, single. And so Ihidoyo has the notion of being a solitary. But if I say solitary in English, you think of St. Ephraim as being a monk living off in the desert. But the word hermit doesn't fit here either. Hermit, from the Greek word, is referring to the desert. You're out in the middle of nowhere. That is not ihidoyo. In the Syriac tradition, these people were very intense in the beginning. In fact, you had heretical movements that came out of it. Some of them condemning marriage. That's how extreme they became in their asceticism. 
But we do know that in the Syriac tradition, there were both men and women who in their conversion and in their baptism, their baptism would not only be initiating them into the body of Christ, but some of them would also choose to imitate the Son of God singularly by becoming ihidoyo, becoming in their solitude ascetics, celibates. But they don't live outside of the world. They don't go out into the desert. They live consecrated individually with their service to the church. It lasted for about the three, 400 years. In the fourth century, it began to shift. After St. Ephraim's time, it began to shift to what we now know as cenobitic or hermitic living, monasteries, the type of thing that we understand now when we speak about religious life. But Saint, Saint Ephraim is Ihidoyo. So he's not a Syriac monk, but he was Ihidoyo. He lived as a solitary, but in the community. He was a teacher. And he lived in the community, which made him associated with the group that we call Benai Kyomo. Benai, you know these words from, you know Benai Berith. It's around politically, culturally. Benai means sons. Benai Berith literally means sons of the covenant. That's all it means in Hebrew. Benai Kiomo means sons of the covenant or sons of the resurrection. And they are individuals who already embraced the angelic life individually, men and women. And they became known as Bar Kiomo, or for the women, Bat Kiomo, a daughter of the resurrection. And later on, when we talk about St. Ephraim writing songs for women's choirs, women's groups, it is clear that it's almost certain that it is for the women who belong, who are Bat Kiomo, who are daughters of the covenant. So as I told you months ago, my task is to make you think like Antioch. And this is the one of ways for you to understand the profound difference there is in the spirituality. When I talk about the fasting and the asceticism, it's because this is fundamentally central to everything within the Syriac church. Like I said, to the point sometimes of being exaggerated and becoming what we call encritism, and it become, moves off into heretical versions way back in the 300s and the 200s. And so that is the second aspect of oneness. Now, I want to leave you with the last oneness. And I told you to kind of take a peek at the icon when you went out. And if you would also this week, as you go out, please go out Appleton Street as much as you can. So then they can come in and disinfect between the two masses. But those who want to pray, stay and pray. They'll spray around you. You can shift down when they're spraying anyway. And there'll be confessions. But he has, in the icon, they have St. Ephraim writing, and this was very specific that this Orthodox priest wanted to have done. And on its writing, it says, Shubho, Shubho Omorie, the Kyono, praise to the Lord of creation. And the second line is, Wateshbuhto el more dictobu, which means, and glory be to the Lord, literally of, Kitobo is a book. And since with CNN and the invasions in Afghanistan and Iraq, you get a lot of, you've gotten a lot of Islamic vocabulary. And you may have come across the fact that the Muslims will refer to Christians and Jews as being people of the book. The Kitobo is the same idea in the Syriac. Translated in English, we would say, and glory to the Lord of Revelation, who has unveiled himself. Kitobo also has the notion of the scriptures. In Latin, the word scripture means the things that are to be written, literally. Kitobo is the thing written. So they don't make a distinction in the word in the sense between book and writing. It's the same word in Syriac. 
And the reason why we finish with this is because in St. Ephraim's vision and his writing is that the knowledge of God, everything is, there's a transparency of the knowledge. So that within nature, God is speaking to us and revealing himself, not in the bizarre new age way of dancing around Katahdin and getting married around an oak tree, not in that manner, but in the manner of God manifesting himself existentially in existent being, that is Morio de Chiono, that is the Lord of nature. He speaks to us. It's why in the beginning of this letter to the Romans that we have read today, read today the very beginning of it, St. Paul has a whole, this whole first chapter as on why the Greeks and the Romans are not excused in their ignorance of God. They are surrounded by the reality of God's work, by nature. And nature tells you a lot about God already. If he doesn't reveal to you who he is in detail, that has to be spoken to you. In the same way that you can know people that you work with in an office building because you recognize them, but you don't know who they are, you know what they are, you know the jobs they have, you see them every day, but you don't know who they are until you go out to lunch with them and they talk and they speak to you. And that is the Lord of Revelation, Mario Tictobo. That is the Lord of the book, the Lord of the scriptures, who not only reveals to us in what he does in nature, but who has spoken to us personally as to who he is. So that's why I wanted you to notice it on what is written on the scroll, because it will be an aspect of what we will talk about over these weeks. And as I mentioned, we enter into a new liturgical season this week. So when you come back next Sunday, everything will be red and there will be different banners up. And that will go until the end of October. And so this icon won't be here anymore, though I will probably keep making references to it, perhaps on occasion, as we continue over these works of St. Paul. So Morio Kiono, Morio Kitobo, the Lord of nature and the Lord of revelation of the book. And so we ask that St. Ephraim intercede for us to obtain for us that profound understanding that religion is not an aspect of my life squared off on a little moment of a few hours on a Sunday morning. But the religion and knowledge of God is something that is meant to penetrate my entire existence and transform me within, not just transform me. And all the mothers around will understand the imagery of St. Paul when he talks about groaning in labor. When is this baby going to come? Short, long, days long, who knows? I know some poor women have gone on for longer than 24 hours. Can't imagine. God bless you all for saying yes to life. But St. Paul uses that image that the spiritual life is not easy. It is a groaning. It is a labor to bring forth a new creation. And so that what we're looking at in this reading today of the Romans and of the Kenero de Rojo, the harp of the spirit, is that what we're looking at is that our entire vision of everything, creation, people, our religion, our prayers, have to be transformed to a transparency so that by the spirit of God, we see God in everything, not just in religious stuff, but in everything. And that, when we understand and we ask for St. Ephraim to intercede for us, to obtain for us this gift, then we understand why St. Paul says that all of creation waits with eager expectation for the revelation of the children of God. That is our calling. That is our vocation to move towards that day. And may the prayers of St. Rampart, uh, the prayers of St. Ephraim be a rampart to us always. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
We believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten God made, consubstantial of the Father, through him all things were made. Christ's men, Christ's salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit, Spirit was incarnate to the Virgin Mary, and became a man. For our sake he was crucified on Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is the glory and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. And we look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. I also forgot to mention, and this is one of the translated second collections done today. The second collection is for the Holy Lands, which is normally a collection that we do on Good Friday. But for obvious reasons this year, it was moved. And so they wanted to put it on the Sunday close to the exaltation of the Holy Cross, which is tomorrow's feast day. And so a second collection today will be for the Holy Land. But our Maronite collections are rarely ever going to be exactly what they are in your Latin parishes. We send them to the national conference, and then everything is sent nationally to the Holy Lands, to the Patriarchate. But for the Maronites, half of it, part of it is retained, and we send it directly to our eparchy of the Maronites in Haifa, in Israel. And so the Maronites are taken care of as part of the collection uh, when it's done directly. And just as a word, even before this pandemic, the Maronites in Israel are in unbelievably poor. They live mostly in the northern part of Israel, but they're a very poor church. So just to give a, a warning, I didn't tell about the, uh, the second collection, but that will take place later on in the Mass. <laughs> Lord and God, you accepted the offerings of our ancestors 
Now accept these offerings that your children have brought to you out of their love for you and for your holy name. Shower your spiritual blessings upon them, and in place of their earthly gifts, grant them life and your imperishable kingdom. We remember our Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ and his plan of salvation for us. We recall upon this offering all those who have pleased God, from Adam to this day, and especially Mary, the Blessed Mother of God, Saint Joseph, her spouse, the Chosen One, Saints Marin and Saint Jude. Remember, O God, the children of the Holy Church, our fathers and mothers and our brothers and sisters both the living and the departed, especially those for whom the sacrifice is offered for the intentions of all the members of this parish. Remember also all those who share with us today in this offering. Continue with the anaphora of the Twelve Apostles on page 754. 754. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Merciful and holy Lord and Father, through your only begotten Son, you prepare the spiritual banquet for us. Accept the offering of this bloodless sacrifice and grant us the gift of your Holy Spirit. Make us worthy to give one another the greeting of peace with pure hearts and with divine love, that we may raise glory and thanks to you, to your only Son, and to your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Peace to your holy altar of God. Peace to the holy mysteries placed upon you. Peace to you, O server of the Holy Spirit. Let us give the greeting of peace to our neighbor with love and faith that are pleasing to God. security and your true love and divine mercy be with us and among us all the days of our lives 
that we may raise glory and thanks to you now and forever. Amen. O Lord, we bow before you and ask that you look upon us with mercy. Make us worthy to approach your holy altar with pure hearts and holy souls and bodies, that we may raise glory and thanks to you now and forever. the Father, and the grace of the only begotten Son, and the communion and indwelling of the Holy Spirit, be with you, my brothers and sisters, forever. And with your spirit. Let us lift up our thoughts, our minds, and our hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord with reverence, and worship him with humility. right and just to glorify and praise you, O God the Father, for you are holy and the giver of life. You are blessed with your only begotten Son and your living Holy Spirit. You are surrounded by the cherubim and seraphim who sing with pure voices and heavenly melodies. They cry out, glorify and proclaim. Father, full of mercy, holy is your only Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, and holy is your life-giving Spirit. You are holy and the giver of all that is good. For our salvation, your only begotten Son became flesh of the pure Virgin Mary, and by his divine plan he saved and redeemed us. Rabiamo haudaktum hasho di lema bidhayin. And sabe lachma bidao kori shanto. O barahu kode. Waxo ya bil talmita koro mara. Sabahola mehene kulho. Hono denita. Vahrodi, Dachlof Aikun, Wachlof Sagie, Metakoseu Metihel, Hosunion, Homewa Hoyen an Alam Alami. Alposo domsiko men hamro men mayo barahu kadesh abel talmida karomara sabishta wa mehne kulhu hono denita demahu dila dia tiki khadato. Dachlo faikun wachlof sagie, et er shadu meti hel. Chusoyon habe wa hoyen al alam alamin. Whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, 
who do so in memory of me until I come again. and to save your inheritance when you appear at the end of time, to reward all people justly according to their deeds. For this your church employs you, and through you and with you employs your Father, saying, sinful children, receive your graces, we thank you for them, and because of them, we praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we profess our faith in you, and we ask you, have compassion on us, O God, have mercy on us, and be your love. Anin monio, anin monio, anin that by his descent he may make this bread the body of Christ our God. Mixture in this chalice, the blood of Christ our God. Amen. May these holy mysteries be for the forgiveness of sins, the healing of souls and bodies, and the strengthening of consciences so that none of your faithful may perish. Rather, make us worthy to live by your Spirit and to lead a pure life. We raise glory to you now and forever. We offer you, O Lord, this divine sacrifice for your church, especially for our fathers and shepherds, Francis, the Pope of Rome, Bashar Peter, our Patriarch of Antioch, Gregory John, our Bishop, and all the bishops of the true faith, the blameless lives of purity and holiness. May they guide your church and present to you a faithful people who honor your name. We pray to you, O Lord. Remember, O oh Lord, your people here before you, especially those who have presented these offerings. Forgive them so that they may always live blameless lives in your presence and recognize the blessings that you bestow upon them, for you are good and rich in graces. We pray to you, O oh Lord. Remember, O oh Lord, civil leaders throughout the world, that they may stand for justice and establish peace. We pray to you, O oh Lord. Lord, have mercy. Remember, O oh Lord, all those who have pleased you from the beginning, especially Mary, the Holy Mother of God, and the prophets, apostles, martyrs, and confessors, St. John the Baptist, Stephen the Archdeacon, St. Joseph, St. Jude, St. Marin, assist us through their prayers and make us worthy to rejoice with them in your kingdom. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. Remember, O Lord, the fathers and teachers of the true faith who have endured sufferings for the sake of your church and your people. May we truly and faithfully follow in their footsteps. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. Remember, O Lord, the faithful departed who have left us and have gone to their rest, hoping in you, awaiting that life-giving voice calling them to life. Accept the offerings we present to you on their behalf 
and have mercy on them in your kingdom. Through our Lord Jesus, who is without sin, we hope to find mercy and forgiveness for our sins and for theirs. Us pardon, O God, and forgive us and the departed, so that your blessed name may be glorified in us and in all things. With the name of our Lord Jesus Christ and of your living Holy Spirit, now and forever. Oblation to offer it yourself for us. You are the forgiving sacrifice who offer it yourself to your Father. You are the high priest who offer it yourself as the Lamb. To your mercy and our prayer of our life and sense. To the offer of your Father to you. To you be glory forever. <coughs> O Lord, compassionate Lord, you, may we, your lowly servants, be made worthy to pray with purity and holiness, and to call upon you, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses. As we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. The King, the Father, and the Lord, 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 Lord, lover of all people, deliver us from the evil one and from his deceitful ways. And do not forsake us, lest temptation overcome us, for yours is the kingdom with your only Son and your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your Spirit. O Lord, bless your faithful people who bow before you. Deliver us from all harm and make us worthy to share in these divine mysteries with purity and holiness. That through them we may be forgiven and made holy, and we raise glory to you now and forever. The grace of the Most Holy Trinity, eternal and consubstantial, be with you, my brothers and sisters, forever. And with your spirit. Holy gifts for the holy, with perfection, purity, and sanctity. One Holy Father, one Holy Son, one Holy Spirit. Blessed be the name of the Lord, for he is one in heaven and on earth. To him be glory forever. Make us worthy, O Lord God, so that our bodies may be sanctified by your holy will, O Lord, and our souls purified by your forgiving love. May our communion be for the forgiveness of our sins and for the new life.
We thank you, Lord God and Father, and we ask that this divine communion be for the forgiveness of sins and the glory of your holy name and that of your only Son and of your Holy Spirit now and forever. Peace be with you. <coughs> Lord Jesus, our God and Savior, you became flesh for our sake. By sacrificing yourself, you saved us. Deliver us from damnation and make us temples of your holy name. For we are your people and your inheritance. We glorify and honor you, your Father and your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Go in peace, my beloved brothers and sisters, with the nourishment and blessings you have received from the forgiving altar of the Lord. May the blessing of the Most Holy Trinity accompany you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, the one God, to whom be glory forever.